Hello my friends, Alfred Taro, the Rebel Turner on Eidos. Eidos, if you don't know, is a sailing catamaran that we actually live in. So my quarters to turn are basically a closet. It's three feet by four foot wide a couple of shelves and of course the most important tool a lathe those of you who don't know who I am well, I've been turning for quite some time, but I've taken some time off since I moved on the boat. I've done a couple of small turnings over here, but turning has not been my priority. And I know you friends, you guys who have watched me over the years, really, really want me to do some sort of turning. On this turning, I'm going to do something fairly small, but a signature piece from the Rebel Turner, which is the droop over bowl. Let's get started and uh, we'll, I'll continue talking as I'm turning. If. So anyway, this particular piece of wood is a piece of red cedar. We're going to get this going and uh, see what I create. I'm starting off with a 5 8 Is this my 5 8 Yeah, 5 8 uh, hurricane bowl gouge and I'm gonna since it's getting rusty from being on the boat I'm going to give it a quick shot it's I am very confined on getting the full swing of this over here so I just do what I can basically the key to sharpening a tool is consistency if you're consistent, then you can uh, get the job done. But the lathe is a variable speed, which is nice. I swear that, uh, you know, that's one of the key features that you have to uh, get on a lathe. It's a fairly light piece. I'm going 700, 800 RPM. Going to go in there, approach it slowly until I start working away at this. So that's my first ten and it's going to be right there. Eventually, a lot of this is going to be cut off because that's going to be the mouth of the, the piece. But at this point, I'm not going to work that at all. So what I will do is uh, create a tenon on the opposite side over here. But I can take a lot of this off that I'm not going to need. And by the 
way, the way I got this mounted, some of you might know, I'm a big fan of just going between centers. So basically I just jam a, um, a spur drive inside my chuck and start turning up. I just lost the grip on my my spur drive because I'm fairly thin over there and I'm just grabbing the center of that. This will be cleaned up. This will come down slightly uh, after and I have to turn a little bit more on the foot. But for now I want to turn it around because I don't have any room to come from the back side uh, with my setup to undermine this. So from here, I'll be able to work it a little bit better. So spin it. Spin it around. I have the tenon on both sides. And uh, by the way, that's how I mount. I basically just put this inside, lock it up. Rather than face plates, I don't use face plates even though I have them, but uh, I try making things as easy as possible. That's, that's my motto. It's not uh, necessary what everybody else does. It's, you know, am I safe with it? Am I okay? Do I need to do anything else with it? So let me see how true I am. And that's actually not bad. It's not bad. I can work with that. So back to my 5 8 uh, bowl gouge and I'm going to clean this up a little bit more and actually see how true it is. But all of this can be re -trued, so it's not crucial that you are 100%. Sneak up the tailstock a little bit more because I always work with the tailstock as long as I can. I'm never in a rush to get rid of that. So you can see that it's got a little wobble. I'm going to increase the speed. 1,080 RPM. Sometimes as I'm turning, I'm looking at shakes that are being developed at that time. And it's like, oh, I like that. And I will leave some detail of that over there until I decide later on. It's like, no, I don't want it. Also, one thing that you gotta make sure you do is try to sneak in your tool rest whenever you can. There are cases where it's just impossible to get it in there, but if you can, do that. Now I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to start undermining this from the back side out.
this right here is the hardest part of all of this is this undermining so don't kill yourself on trying to keep undermining until you meet up to the thickness that you want it's okay it's much easier for you to flip it over and finalize it from this side I am not going to be doing much sanding at all on my pieces several reasons well one important reason why is the amount of dust that it creates and me being in an enclosed environment a uh, very small area over here uh, and it's my living quarters so any sanding I do does possess quite a quite a bit of a, a dilemma as far as dust is concerned that foot again slightly tool. diamond tool so it's shaped just under 90 degrees so therefore, when I'm flat against the base and I go in, and that's giving me roughly a 10 degree slope pitch on that foot itself. And that's pretty good. Well, I mean, right now, I could basically sand this. It's still the easiest side to sand from. So, uh, like I said, I'm not going to be doing much sanding with uh, my wood turnings, but I will r very likely pass a bit of sandpaper, maybe just 80 grit, just to get a, a little bit of fibers out of it, and I'm out of there. I am not going to be going through the different grits and all that stuff. So, let's see. thing that I will do is I will pass a very fine grip after this to uh, make sure that uh, I can get a finish on this but with 80 grit right now I'm happy with the results time to flip it over again and uh, finalize the top then this part I will do this one more time and get rid of that but it will be on a different setup so what I'm going to say right now I know that sometimes it's not possible but whenever you know that you gotta flip something over think about the size of the mouth the opening whatever it is over here whether if it's going to work over your whole jaws or your uh, you know something or you're going to have to make a jam chuck for it one way or the other so I'm going to on this particular case because of the size of the jaws I'm going to uh, make it where I can have it like a recess on the mouth and be able to open up the jaws on expansion right around here which, which is basically the size that I think I'm gonna end up being it's 
still gotta get used to this lathe. Uh, it's different from mine. It feels different on how you're moving things and uh, so on and so forth. From my old one. I miss my shop. I miss my ability to go in there and really do some serious wood turning. But, you know, you can turn with whatever you got or whatever size shop you have. You don't be thinking that to get to wood turning you have to have this, you have to have that. I am limited on just about everything you can imagine. And I'm going to speed it up now even a little bit more. It's balanced. It's at top speed with the belt configuration that I got which is 1150 RPM. Carefully, very carefully going back here because you can damage the natural edge that you got in here by going a little bit too too close to the edge or too aggressive. That's about the size of the mouth that I'm going to be making on this. for the fun part and the amount of bark that I got over here is, uh, uh, I could take off a little bit more in here I want to be a little bit thinner on this bark area and I still missed I still have a, a part over here that's flat uh, which to me that's not acceptable it's not planned. I uh, would flip it back up and uh, still take this part. I don't know if you can see this, but this has got a little bit of wood over here rather than just the fibers of the uh, of the bark. I got that there and here. So when you look at it, you know, you would have this part with wood grain going all the way up to the top where you have a little bit of the thickness of the bark coming up on the other ends. So let me correct that. And I can recenter it right in there before tightening it up and see if I'm true, which I am. But at this point, oh, never mind that. I just need to pull away on this a little bit. Let's take a look at that. <coughs> okay, that's much better. Now you don't see that straight edge 
of where the uh, the wood and the bark are separated. Now this, I mean, like I said, I could cut them up with uh, scissors. I can sand them down if I go into it. Not, not outside, but into the wood. I'm not trying to smooth it. I want the jags of the bark still to show up. I just don't want the flyaways to be there. If you got a piece that's flying off uh, and you still got bark underneath, uh, leave it. Uh, you know, let it fly. You still have plenty of wood in there to work with. That's pretty much end to, if you're too flat in one area, just do it with the edge of the sandpaper and just take what wants to come off. But always go into it and not away from it. Let me sand this up a little bit more. Now I chose the orientation that I put this piece on because I wanted to make sure that I didn't end up too cylindrical and I thought that this knot, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to still hold it but that it would uh, give me a nice highlighted feature on this piece. So that's why I did it that way. So where the tailstock out of the way so I can get in here with my tool a little bit better I can come from back here and do as much as I can with this turning again continuing with my 5 8 bowl gouge Now, if you want to make things a little easier, and if you have a, a drill chuck with a good sized drill bit, keep it on your headstock or your tailstock and go in there and uh, you can mine it. And I want to make a point on that. The reason why it helps you so much is beca because it's much easier for you to cut from in out than it is from the outside going in. So one way or the other, whether if you establish a hole and then you can come out, it makes life a little bit easier.
way I can swing my arm out that way. So in that case, I'm actually going to go in reverse. So I can swing my tool from out here. Slow it down though. to see if I can use my gooseneck tool and uh, come in from inside out. Full speed. I'm going to apply a little bit of OB Shine Juice. I'm not going to super buff. I'm not going to do anything with this. Other than some old OB Shine Juice that I still have in the shop. In here. It's a little bit on the thick side. It needed to be thinned down with uh, some denatured alcohol or uh, actually I need to, to make a new batch of this so next time I come down here I will do that but for now I'm just going to utilize this Time to get it out, flip it, and finish the bottom. And like I said, whenever I can, make it to the size of the jaws. Whether if they fit in here or out here, I prefer them in there, but either one works. And there it is, it's nice and true. No need for anything really special, just all you need is the motivation that you want to be turning stuff and the rest will all fall in. 